What's up guys? When we want to solve a problem like this, there was three things that caught my attention. The first was the parentheses. Number two was the fractions. And number three was going to be that we have a variable on both sides. So having that understanding of what I'm looking at is now going to help me provide a kind of idea of how I'm going to approach a problem like this. The first thing I'm going to look at is these parentheses. I want to get rid of the parentheses. And the way that we get rid of the parentheses is by applying the distributive property. Now you can see here, uh, go ahead and simplify this, just because I wanted to make sure that you saw that I'm multiplying a 2 thirds times x as well as a 2 thirds times 6. Now we can definitely simplify this. You could divide the 3 divided by 6 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, or you can multiply straight across and get 2 times 6 is 12 divided by 3, and still you're going to get the answer 4. There you go. I just didn't want to be one of those like random textbooks that doesn't explain where my steps came from. I wanted to show you exactly how I got that 4. All right, so now let's go and look at the next thing, which is the fractions. Now, a lot of times when students see a problem with fractions, sometimes they take up their paper and throw it away. Sometimes they like just stop and they're like, I'm not even gonna approach this problem. But if you can kind of think about this rule, not really a rule, but a mindset. Whenever you see fractions, just get rid of your fractions. Don't worry about trying to do your operations or solving with fractions because you can easily get rid of fractions. The easiest way to get rid of a fraction, ladies and gentlemen, is to divide your denominator into your numerator. See, 8 divided by 2 is a fraction, right? But I can take my 2, evenly divide into my 8, and guess what? I no longer have a fraction. That's good. Now you might say, well, that works great, Miss McLogan, but 3 doesn't evenly divide into 2. You are correct. 3 does not evenly divide into 4x minus 7. You are correct. So, what is my response? How about let's find the smallest number that 3 divides into? And that number is going to be 3. Well, as long as I multiply everything times 3, then I'm not breaking my rules of equality. So if I multiply three times everything, I can now get rid of my denominators. Okay, so I decided to show my multiplication times everything just to make sure you, you can keep me honest with my accounting. Um, now again, the important thing is now when we need to simplify, just remember this 3 that I'm multiplying by can really be written as a 3 over 1, right? Just like I can write that 4 as 4 divided by 1. The reason why that's important is because I have a 3 in the denominator and the 3 in the numerator. Well, since they're separated by multiplication here, those are just going to divide to 1. The same thing happens over here. This 3 evenly divides into this 3. So therefore, I don't have to worry about the multiplication in this case. So now, I'm just going to be left with this equation. Okay, so now comes into my last thing. We have variables on both sides. And the one thing I want you to remember, when you have variables on both sides, or when you're trying to solve for any equation, you have x, you know, or with an x, like you want that variable to be isolated. So we got to get the variable all by itself. Now, typically, the way that we read from left to right, we always like to solve for x on the left-hand side. However, I prefer, as a math teacher, prefer to always kind of solve for x for it to be positive because I feel like whenever I make it negative, it just brings more opportunities for me to make mistakes and I don't like making mistakes in front of my classroom or making mistakes on videos. So what I'm going to do is rather than subtracting a 4x on both sides, I'm going to subtract the smaller of the terms as a 2x on both sides. Therefore, those are going to subtract to 0 and then this is going to leave me a 2x on the right hand side. I can also go ahead and combine a 3 minus my negative 7. That's going to leave me with a negative 4. Okay, and now you can see we have a lovely two-step equation. That is the whole goal. When you want to solve multi-step equations, you just want to simplify it down to a two-step equation. There's one thing you should be good at. That is solving two-step equations. you got to isolate the variable, right? Undo addition and subtraction first. Then undo multiplication and division. And ladies and gentlemen, we get now x is going to equal to an 8. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That was my step-by-step -step explanation for how to solve a multi-step equation like that. Hopefully this video was helpful for you, and if it was, you're going to love the next video I have for you here.